Hello and welcome to a new episode of Debut Diaries. I'm Lizelle Sambri, I'm a young adult author, and this Debut Diaries series is all about debut year and my experience of being a debut author. If you didn't know, uh, my debut novel, <laughs> Blood Like Magic, is coming out June 15th of this year. And so I started this series to basically share about different aspects of the process of being a traditionally published debut author. And so today I'm going to be talking about pre-order campaigns and book swag. So all of my book swag has come in, so I'm going to show you it. But before then, I I'm going to talk a little bit about pre-order campaigns, what they are, um, and whether or not I am doing one. So let's get straight into it. A pre-order campaign is essentially a thing that authors and sometimes publishers will do. So this offers basically swag or gifts or like items in exchange for you pre-ordering the book. So a lot of time this will be things like bookmarks, book plates, um, art prints, it can be enamel pins, it can be um, also it could be like digital goods, like an exclusive um, annotated chapters or could be things like a um, little side story, a bonus story, bonus chapters, deleted chapters. Pre-orders Gifts can be so many different things, but the aim of it is that you offer something in exchange for someone pre-ordering the book so that you can try and get more pre-orders in um, because pre-orders count for things like hitting certain lists and that sort of thing. Um, and sometimes like getting a lot of pre-orders off the bat um, can help your publisher kind of notice that your book is doing well and they might put more marketing money into you and into your book because they're like, oh, this is getting a lot of pre-orders, it's doing quite well. So that's what a pre-order campaign is. Um, people can ask for proof or not. So sometimes people will ask for proof. So you have to show a receipt that shows that you purchased the book. Um, sometimes people won't ask for that and then you don't have to. Um, I find a lot of the time if people are going to mail you some sort of goods, they do want to see the receipt. Um, and there's a lot of thoughts around pre-order campaigns um, that I've been paying attention to because I was trying to figure out whether or not I wanted to do one. And there are so many different schools of thought, but like what I took away from other authors that talked about pre-order campaigns, that it was very much something you did because you wanted to. Um, because a lot of the times the people that submit to your pre-order campaign or people that probably would have pre-ordered your book anyway. Um, it seems like from what I've heard from other authors that it doesn't often turn the tide. Like it doesn't make people who wouldn't have pre-ordered suddenly pre-order. Um, that often it just kind of gives a gift to people that would have pre-ordered your book. And so I considered long and hard <laughs> And I finally decided not to do a pre-order campaign. I have gone back and forth on this so many times. Even though I'm saying now that I've decided not to do it, I honestly, I'm like, who knows in the future, but I don't think I will be doing one. And this is for kind of two reasons. The first reason that's a big reason is cost. If you didn't know, I live in Canada. I am Canadian. <laughs> And our postal system is not great and it's very expensive. Um, it is expensive to send things. And my book is being published in the US and looking at my like statistics for my social media and for like YouTube and stuff, most of my audience is actually in the US. And so I imagine that if I did a pre-order campaign, most of my pre-orders would be in the US, meaning mailing a many things to the US, which is not cheap for me. Um, and then also I considered, um, the second thing I considered, oh right, this is along with expense, I'm sorry. Uh, the second thing with expense is that if you do a pre-order campaign, you must order more of the swag stuff that you were going to order. So if you were gonna do like stickers, then you've gotta order way more than you would have if you were doing like a couple of giveaways or something like that. And so that's been kind of, yeah, those are the big costs essentially. And the second thing was effort. Um, I thought long and hard about whether on my debut week I wanted to be having to frantically mail out a bunch of stuff. And I didn't feel like I wanted to do that. Um, I felt like that would kind of 
be stressful for me. And then I also kind of thought about like what I wanted to offer readers because people do pre-order campaigns often, at least the authors I know, because they want to give something to the people that pre-order to be like, hey, thank you. Um, and I kind of liked the idea of being able to give something and just be like, hey, you can kind of win this. I was more interested in doing giveaways than doing a pre-order campaign. So that basically to say, um, after doing all my research, I kind of decided against doing a pre-order campaign. Originally, I was like, oh, maybe I'll do a digital pre-order campaign. But then I thought of that and I was like, why wouldn't I just make that stuff available on my website just for anyone? Um, which was interesting because I had talked to um, Tracy Dion, the author of Legend Board, which is an amazing, amazing book way back when. Um, and she had done, she had talked about like doing some wallpapers like of her characters and stuff and just like putting it on her website for anyone to download and I thought that was really cool and I really liked that and so that's essentially kind of where I landed that I was more interested in doing giveaways and like offering free stuff on my website than doing a dedicated pre-order campaign so I will not be doing one. <laughs> And now the moment you've maybe been waiting for, I feel like if I were watching this video, this would be the moment that I had been waiting for, which is the book swag. So I decided what I'm going to be doing is I'll be doing several giveaways and the giveaways will be like giveaway prize packs. So I'm still waiting for my ARCs, my advanced copies to come in. Um, they should be coming in. They've been delayed because the printing company just has like so many things to print um and so they'll be coming i think sometime this month so once once they come i'll be able to start doing the giveaways but i decided i'm going to do them in like a prize pack style so i'll do an advanced copy and i'll do a bunch of book swag items and i'll just like give away prize packs like periodically um and so I think that's where I want to go. And then I also will have, I think, some digital goods that I will put up on my website just kind of for anyone to download if they wanted to. Um, so let's get into the book swag. I'm going to go one by one and reveal them to you. So first things first. The bookmark. Oh, there we go. There's the front and there's the back. Yeah, so it's a pretty simple bookmark. Um, I did design the bookmark myself. Uh, I designed a few versions before, like the original version, I had a quote on the front. Um, but then I decided like, because people love the cover so much, I really love the cover also. I figured that people would rather have a bookmark with like more prominence of the cover on it. So I did a portion of the cover with my main character, Voya kind of in the side. Um, I used my Apple Pencil to do a little signature um, and then like digitally on my iPad and then I just uploaded it and pulled it. Um, I made the bookmark in Illustrator uh, because of printing reasons. Um, and then, uh, so I got it printed from Jukebox Printing. I'll put a link to all the people I mentioned here. I got it printed from Jukebox Printing. I got, 300 bookmarks which <laughs> so here's the thing I got 300 bookmarks because I hope that I'll be able to send some bookmarks um, and some book plates I'm going to show you those in a minute to indie bookstores to include in their pre-orders so this is kind of my like little work around for the pre-order campaign thing. Um, so I'm hoping that I can reach out to some indie bookstores and send them bookmarks and like book plates and have them included in the pre-orders that come through their store. And that way I can post on social and I can say, hey, if you order from these indies, then you'll be able to get bookmarks and you'll be able to get book plates within with your order. And then I can kind of send them a few of those. And I think I would kind of rather do that. And then I can support the indies and then people can still also get pre-order gifts. So I think that's like a good workaround. I've heard of some other people um, specifically partnering with indies and the indie does their pre-order campaign. So people order through them and they'll do all the pre-order goodies and they'll pack it for them because they're already going to ship it and it's flat and it's easy to include. So 
Yes, so Jukebox, I paid extra for them to punch this hole and put this metal grommet in it. And then I bought these tassels separately. And so the bookmarks all came just with the little grommet. And then I just put all the tassels on them. Um, and I really love it. I saw Alexandra, um, who is the author of These Feathered Flames, I believe it's called. I'll link all her stuff below. And I saw that she had tassels on her bookmarks and I was like, I don't want tassels on my bookmarks. So I just was cool to pay the extra for it. So that's the little tassel, it's silver. And yeah, and then the back, I just kind of put the book cover, the title, um, I put my link for pre-order, which is just my web page on my website for Blood Like Magic. It has all the book information, all the pre-order information, press information, it'll also have the like freebie stuff and then just my social media stuff. So super, super simple book bookmark. Um, I'm really happy with it. I think it real, looks really nice and I'm excited to send these out and include these in prize packs. Item number two is the book plate. So, uh, can you see it? Oh. There we go. That should be good. So I also designed the book plate myself. Um, I designed it in Photoshop this time. I don't know why I'm switching all over the place with where I design stuff. But anyway, I designed it in Photoshop. Um, again, it's like mostly focused on Voya's face and I put my little name underneath and then I signed them. So I got I got, originally got 250 of these and then they had a sale and so I bought another 100. And yeah, so I just like signed them all. And these are again something that I want to send to indie bookstores to be like, hey, you can include this in the pre-order. And then again, share on social. If you want a signed book plate and bookmark, order from these indie bookstores, that sort of thing. So. That was the book plate. I'm really happy actually with how the book plate turned out. And I used a metallic Sharpie to sign them. People like were kind of hating on the Sharpie. And I was like, oh man, what am I supposed to use? Everybody talks about using the Sharpie. But I find that the Sharpie, like it works super well on book plates. I used one Sharpie to sign 250 and it still hasn't run out. So I think it like works pretty well for sticker. I know paper is like a different thing with sharpies but like it worked well for my purposes so and now i don't know which one of these to show you first i'll show you okay i'll show you <laughs> the art prints first so i got two art prints so um i'll just show them to you first so that's the love interest luke and there is my main character Voya. I'm like trying to make sure I get it in frame. There we go. And then this is the back. So I don't know if I, I think I forgot to mention, but I got the book plate printed by Moo and these were also printed by Moo. So these are square postcards essentially um, because I wanted to print the art print, but I also wanted to make sure that I could like have book information in case like people, I don't know, down the line, somebody got an art print and then they were like, what is that from? And then looked on the back and saw, or like someone was like, oh, that's so cool. What is that? And they were like, oh yeah. And like looked on the back and could see the book information. I don't know. This is my line of thinking. Um, so yes, these art prints. So I drew these myself and I painted them in watercolor. Um, I then took pictures of them with literally with my iPad, which is so funny. Um, and I pulled the photos into Photoshop and I like cleared the background and I adjusted the colors for printing and stuff and I'm really happy with how they've turned out I think they look really really good um, I'm really happy that I was able to <laughs> draw something myself um, because I really just got back into drawing like last year I used to draw before but I really just kind of like hopped back into it and I was really happy I was able to make something nice enough that I was fine to give it to people <laughs> um, I had to draw Voya twice the first time I messed up and I redrew her and this time it came out much better. 
Um, so I'm really, really happy with those. I think those are kind of nice character portraits. Um, also, you may have noticed I did save a lot of money by designing everything and like drawing everything myself because I didn't have to pay an artist. Um, also, the big reason why I had drawn these myself was so that I could offer them freely. So I'm planning to make like a file that I'll share on my website that can make these printable. So if people want to print out like an 8x10 or a 4x6 or 5x7 of these prints to like display at home, they'll be able to do that. So that's something that will go on my website as well as like a little freebie. I don't know what other little freebies I'll do, but like that's it. So I'm planning to send these out, of course, together. And then the final swag item is the sticker. There we go. So this is my little Bud Like Magic sticker. I'm really, really happy with this. Again, I designed this myself. <laughs> uh in procreate on my ipad um i've actually done like two designs of this um because i just like there the first time i did it it was very sketchy but it kind of looked a little bit pixelated i got it printed by one company and i didn't really I, when i first got it i liked how it looked but then i sat on it and i didn't like it anymore and i thought it was too small so then i ordered i redrew it to be a little bit sharper um and then i ordered a bigger size so this is a three by three sticker so it's a bit it's quite a bit larger which i really like things falling off my lap so i'm really happy with that and that'll again be in any little giveaways so yeah, I really, I'm so in love with the sticker. I really love it. And I got the stickers from Sticker App. Um, I watch a lot of like artists and stuff like Apple Cheeks and like um, Catnip illustrations and like who run their own little Etsy businesses and stuff. And I noticed that a bunch of them were using Sticker App essentially to print their stickers. And so I was like, I want to try them because I wanted to see what the quality was like. It's really good quality. I will say if you're Canadian, it took a month for it to get to me. <laughs> and that's why this video is happening now because I was waiting for the sticker to come so I could do this video. So shipping's a little bit long if you live in Canada, but I think if you live in the US, it's probably a lot faster. And so I'm really happy with my decision to use my swag in that way to do the smaller giveaways. Um, than to do a whole pre-order campaign. Originally, it like caused me a lot of panic, which was my back and forth because I was like, oh, so many people do pre-order campaigns. If I don't do a pre-order campaign, like, is that gonna affect things? Will I have wished that I did? But I think I feel good about going about it the way I'm going about it, which is doing the giveaways and mailing larger amounts of bookmarks and book plates to indie bookstores to have them include in pre-orders. Um, I think that will really work for me. And again, I'm still like four and a half ish months out. Um, it's possible my publisher might do other things. So you never know, but I at least know for me that this is what I have planned and I have all my stuff now except for the arcs they're coming and then i can go ahead with like going wild with that sort of promo stuff uh, i still don't know if i'm gonna do an annotated copy mostly because i just like don't want to read my book again i'm so tired of reading it <laughs> and if i annotate it then i have to read it again and i'm like I don't know that I want to do that so but we'll see maybe I will get over it and I'll be able to annotate a book or like do like a fun sprayed edges thing I saw Kat Cho did a video I'll link it um where she like uh, sprayed the edges of her book or like painted the edges um like DIY style and I think that'd be cool too so yeah that's all of my book swag pre-order things to talk about um, I hope that I've provided enough information to kind of give you enough know-how about how I went about this book swag process. Um, if you have any questions about that, like for sure, feel free to comment about it and I will answer to the best of my abilities. And yeah, thank you for joining me on another episode of Debut Diaries. Hopefully, fingers crossed, next week 
not next week, next month will be the Debut Diaries ARC unboxing video. We'll see. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And see you later. Bye.